Mr. Mr. Speaker, I move to recognize our speaker, Alan Peter Cayetano. The Honorable Speaker of the House of Representatives is recognized for his address. My dear colleagues, mga kababayan, discerning and praying about the decisions that we had to make. And ito po ang pumasok sa isip ko, yung sa John 3.30, and regardless po kung ano ang ating religion, He must increase and I must decrease. Ibig sabihin, ang Diyos ang dapat mag-increase at tayo naman ang mawala in leading people. Jeremiah 17.9 tells us that the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Ulitin ko po, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? So it is with the understanding that while we seek to do what is right, human nature gives us a deceitful heart that I'd like to address the nation today. We are in the midst of a great crisis, fighting a terrible virus, working towards saving lives and livelihood, keeping our kababayan safe while endeavoring to bring our struggling economy back to life. Klaro po sa atin yan. Pakahirap pong i-implement yung ECQ. Nung nag-modify naman po, napakarami din violation. Nung una, maraming hindi nakakaintindi or hindi naabot ng impormasyon kung bakit importante to stay at home. Di lang po sa Pilipinas yan. Kahit anong channel sa cable TV ang panoorin nyo sa Europe, sa Africa, sa Amerika, yung stay at home, talagang mahirap intindihin nung umpisa. Ngayon naman po na gusto natin bumalik kung hindi sa normal, sa new normal, ang dami din pong pagsubok. I asked several times that we focus on this. As early as February, this House of Representatives, through this representation, warned that while we're dealing with many issues, katulad po ng earthquake uh, sa various parts of Mindanao, rehabilitation of Marawi, while we were taking care of uh, many issues uh, that will help our nation rise up again, maraming mga sakuna na parating, and we warned of COVID-19. Arguing that the fate and future of one private corporation, no matter how influential, cannot be weighed against the welfare of the nation and the well-being of the people. But I guess the reality is that for many, the siren call of politics is just too much to resist. And politics, like the virus, brings out the best and worst in us. Let me be candid with all of you and speak from the heart. Ito po ay galing sa puso ko. I am disappointed, I am hurt, and to a certain degree, I am frustrated. Not because I am for or against the renewal of the ABS-CBN franchise. Nor am I frustrated, hurt, or disappointed because I'm being criticized. Sala sa lamig, sala sa init. Sabi ko nga, nung tinatanong ako ng asawa ko, ano pakiramdam ko, sabi ko, it's good to be loved. The pro-ABS loves me. The anti or ABS or shutdown also loves me. Both of them love to hate me. That is the reality when you are in the midst of a highly charged political issue. But dapat bataguan yon? Hindi. Pero siyempre, tao din po tayo at nakakaramdam po ng disappointment, hurt, and frustrated. But the reason why I say that there is hurt, disappointment, and frustration is because I really believe 
that we can temporarily set aside that which divides us and has divided us for a long time because we are talking about survival. We are talking about people's lives. We are talking about people's livelihood. So akala ko, pag sinabing time out lang, di ba? Dahil para sa bayan naman to, para sa atin lahat, we can find a consensus. From the start, all I've ever asked from anyone in this chamber and outside this chamber regarding this or any other issue is that we should do what is right. And that has been a struggle ever since both the pro-renewal and pro-shutdown forces do not want to give an inch to each other or other way. And so we find ourselves veering off the topic at a time when focus is what our people needs most. Sino po ang sasalungat o magdidibate that to adapt, to innovate, and to manage is what we should be focusing on to help our people. Yet, this issue, yes, partly political, partly moral, some say will be an issue of press freedom, some say will not, but this has to stop. This has to be resolved. The more I say, wag mo na natin pag-usapan, the more na pinag-uusapan. Pag sinabing on the air, maraming galit. Pag sinabing off the air, maraming galit. Pag sinabing ito prinsipyo, nabayaran ka. Pag sinabing nabayaran ka, nabayaran ka nung dalawa kasi bumaliktad ka. Napaka-poisoned at toxic nung atmosphere. But please look at people who are dealing with uncertainties. You know, we, we have a former colleague who passed away. And I have a very good friend who lost his mother and now has a sibling who is suffering, hindi COVID. You know, and, and when I speak to families who are in dire need, especially sa health, parang lahat ito hindi importante, di ba? And I guess many of you who are here, and especially those of you who are not here in Zoom, uh, who, who are in your districts because walang commercial flights, pag pumunta sa inyong bahay ang inyong mga constituents na humingi ng pagkain, humingi ng ayuda, umiiyak na yung tatay nila o nanay hindi makauwi, you know, all of this seems to be so small. No? Of course, it's not always so small. Parts of Mindanao ngayon walang TV because they only have ABS-CBN. Sasabihin naman na iba, kita mo, pro siya. Hindi po. Ayoko lang na walang napapanood ang tao sa kanilang tahanan. And in this, and in saying that this has to stop and this has to be resolved, and in saying that there is pain, hurt, frustration, and disappointment, may I also tell you very honestly that I am hopeful because I am full of faith that despite the terrible things that are happening around the world and in, the com in, and in our communities, God will touch our hearts, show us our mistakes, and build us back better. He will restore us. He will heal us. God wants us to do what is right. But perhaps what is right may be subjective. Or maybe we make it subjective depending on what's in our hearts. And let me remind you, our hearts are deceitful. I can easily tell you all that my heart says this is what is correct. But Bishop Abante, who's staring at me, our minority leader, could come up to me and tell me, brother, you are wrong. Your heart is deceiving you. So how do we define what is right? We all define what is right based on our own perspective, based on our own point of view, and based on our own feelings. And so we can have all the passion in fighting for what we believe is right, yet end up losing ourselves in the process. The end just not justify the means. Di po natin pwedeng murahin ng mga kasama natin. Di po natin pwedeng islander mga kasama natin. 
di natin pwedeng biglang suntukin o sunugin ang bahay ng kasama and say, hindi, tama ako sa argument. Eh. Baka tama ka sa punto mo. Pero the way you went about it is wrong. And I hope people will agree to, with me today. Whether you are for the 25-year franchise or for the shutdown, let us agree we're going about it the wrong way. I can agree that my way is also wrong. Hindi ko sinasabi na yung tama yung paraan ko. But there has to be a way. In other words, we can fight for what is right, yet be fighting for it in the wrong way. Discerning what is right in policy making, especially in highly charged political issues like this, necessitates a fair and transparent process. This is so that people will be able to make informed judgment that will not only be fair, but also understandable and ultimately acceptable to those who will find themselves on the losing end. Think of any controversial measure here today. LGBT rights, divorce, POGO, whether we should allow it or not, death penalty, amending the Constitution, foreign ownership of land, land reform, whether we stick to the present system or there's a new system or we should go to commercial farming. Those are all controversial measures. Some of you will stand up here and say that you are right. Some will stand up and say, no, you are wrong, we are right. But we start calling each other names. Or do we have a process, a legislative process where everyone is allowed to speak para po marinig nung lahat. So kung hindi po natin kayang desisyonan na tayo lang, bakit natin hindi involve ang publiko? May social media naman, nandiyan naman ang media na nakabantay, but hindi po tayo maghiring at habang lumalabas ang lahat ng kuro-kuro, lahat ng opinion, lahat ng lamat, pati hugot, ilabas na rin natin. So that people will hear the argument and can form their judgment. And for those of you who already have a judgment, may mawawala ba na itest mo yung paniniwala mo by listening to the other side? And if, despite listening to everyone, we cannot agree, again, kahit anuman issue yan, wouldn't it enhance our acceptance of how the majority voted if we know why they voted that way. We don't have to be unanimous. It doesn't have to always be a consensus. But to not discuss at all, that is the dictatorship. So, parating na sa issue, diktador, hindi diktador, diktador, diktador. Eh kung ayaw nyo mag-hearing at ayaw nyo pag-usapan to sa tamang oras, eh lahat tayo diktador. Ang diktador yung nagsasabing, Ako lang ang tama, ako lang ang masusunod. Wala pong nagsasabi nun dito po sa Kongreso. May nagsasabing, pasa natin kaagad. But I know they still want a hearing. So sana po sa publiko, we can find a way that there will be fa fairness and we can agree on timing. Timing is essential in doing what is right. I said before, I have been taught that it is always the right time to do what is right. But obviously, this becomes complicated or a complicated matter when we cannot even agree on what is right and what we should be doing. And now that ABS-CBN is off the air, of course, they have a different view of timing and fairness compared to if the NTC did not come in and they were on the air. And of course, for those who are anti, who are saying this is a new franchise, for them, it is unfair to put ABS back on the air before there's a hearing. So, I will agree with everyone. Fairness at timing, pati doon may debate. I still believe that dedicating all of our efforts to defeating COVID-19 or the new coronavirus and giving our countrymen something to hope for, shining the light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak, is the right thing to do. And more importantly, this is the right thing to do now. Unfortunately, everyone agrees with me that dapat ito ang focus, pero hindi po mawala sa ating isipan, sa ating puso, sa ating dila, at sa ating daliri. 
pag nag-Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook, social media, ang issue ng ABS-CBN. I still believe that we need to be united as one nation and set aside all non-urgent, highly contentious issues that will tear us apart. Despite what people on the extreme ends of the issue want to project, politics should not be our main concern right now. When we first decided to hold the hearings after the break, it was under the well-founded belief that it was not urgent since there was no threat of ABS-CBN going off the air. Congress relied on the legal precedents, the DOJ opinion, the unanimous support of both houses of Congress, and the National Telecommunication Commission's commitment under oath that they will issue a provisional authority. On that point, let me just add that Congress will never allow these agencies to lie and mislead us in their sworn testimonies. If they lie to us, they lie to the people. But this does not mean we are completely against what they stand for. We only ask that they respect this House as we respect them and their position. Scolding the Solicitor General doesn't mean his legal assertions and accusations are right. It also doesn't mean they are wrong. It simply means we should have presented, they, he should have presented or at least found a way to inform Congress so that we could have calibrated and decided intelligently, intelligently our actions. So when we say mali ang NTC na nagsinungaling sa atin, di naman natin inuusgahan yung kanilang legal opinion. Ang sinasabi po natin, huwag kayo magsisinungaling sa Kongreso kasi ang actions namin sa Kongreso ay based sa testimony na ibinibigay nyo dito sa amin. Pag sinabi ng DOH, one, two, three, four factors have been met, pwede na tayo mag-GCQ. We have to rely on you. And then pag kumalat at sabi nyo, ay we lied pala, ganito parang, parang paraming kaso, then you point your fingers at Congress. We will take responsibility when we make the decision, and it is the wrong decision, based on the testimony given us. But if our decision becomes wrong because you lied to us or you falsified data or you gave us the wrong information, then simply it's garbage in, garbage out. And we cannot allow that to keep happening or to happen again in this Congress. And even as all this, and even as this all changed, my commitment as Speaker of this House to do and to prioritize what is right has never faltered. Together with the House leadership and together with the leadership of the political parties, the geographic and regional groups and the party list representing your different sectors, we tried to come up with a fair arrangement where ABS-CBN would be allowed to broadcast while Congress and Senate holds its hearing. Some have asked, why the need to give a provisional franchise? The provisional franchise does not mean we are pro-ABS-CBN, as some may claim. Nor does it mean that we are holding the network hostage, as others allege. It simply means fairness while we're deciding on the case. Again, sala sa lamig, sala sa init. Pag binigyan mo ng provisional franchise, sabi po nung iba na nasa side ng ABS-CBN, kita nyo, ino hostage ng Congress. Gustong diktahan yung news. Sasabihin naman po nung kabilang side, kita nyo, kakampi, nabayaran. Kaya bibigyan nila ng temporary franchise. This was simply to allow more of our countrymen to see, hear, understand, and judge for themselves what their elected officials are doing in their name, but also that all Filipinos deserve to see how and whether or not the network will broadcast the hearings with fairness and what are the accusations, evidence against them and their responses. I hear you, those who are saying, mas maganda mag-hearing na off the air sila para patas. But I am telling you my personal uh, view. Mas gusto ko nga eh, na nag-hearing tayo on there para makita natin. 
kung fair sila o may bias, kung ang pinapalabas lang nila yung mga punto nila o pinapalabas din ba nila ang mga punto na laban sa kanila. ba? Diba? But again, that's not for me to decide. That was my personal view that I tried to push. But again, many agreed, many disagreed, but many decided to start calling each other names. This was the middle ground that we hope would bring together people so that we may go back and more importantly, win the war against COVID-19 and take care of people's needs. But even with all the efforts to be fair and balanced, the toxic partisanship this issue provokes has poisoned the well of public discourse. Ang public discourse po ay parang isang balon. And it, we have a hundred people discussing, it only takes one from each side na maglagay ng lason at lahat na nang kumuha sa balon ay malalason. So I still believe most of our people and many if not all of our congressmen are arguing passionately based on what they believe and are not poisoning the well. But there are some who are in the extreme who are poisoning the well. Both sides of the extreme have now gone beyond passional debate and fair advocacy and are engaged in name-calling, slander, and humiliating each other, all for the sake of this one partisan political issue. If we are going to survive and build back better, we have to stop acting like young children and we have to mature quickly. Social networks and innovations in technology bring out childlike idealism. Maganda po yan. It democratizes discussion. Maganda din po yan. It brings the discussions into not only your household, but to every single person holding a cell phone. Even now as I speak, people are commenting on the Facebook site of Congress. Even now, as you look at your cell phones, you are getting feedback from your sectors, from your party, from your people. Unfortunately, it also brings out the bullies in us. It brings out yung pagka alaskador. It brings out the meanness in us. No? We have to mature by listening to each other's point of view by allowing assertions to be proven by evidence, by having a fair and transparent process that would allow all of us to make informed judgment. This process will make sure that walang, sali walang saling pusa, walang moro-moro sa usapan mahalaga sa bayan. Hindi po tayo pwede magmoro-moro sa issue na to. At lalong-lalo na pong hindi pwedeng walang saling pusa. Sa hearing na dadating, Lahat ng gusto magsalita, gawan natin ang paraan. Kaya national artist po siya or budding artist. Kaya isang senior legislator po o isang gusto palang tumakbo sa 2022. Kung siya po ay expert tax lawyer o siya po ay isang accountant na gusto palang mag-aral ng batas, gagawan natin ang paraan, marinig ang kanilang opinion. And hopefully, Walang maagrabyado sa usapan tungkol sa justisya. But we have to learn to see these things for what they are rather than they immediately conclude with faulty judgment. Let me address myself to the extremists outside Congress who are either for or against ABS franchise renewal. Don't poison the debate. It will not help your cause nor enrich your position. Let love and reason carry our passions and argument, not hate and obsession. Lahat po na nagsasalita po ngayon, hindi lang po hugot yun, importante sa kanila. So pakinggan din natin. If we disagree, we say that we disagree. Diba? But ba't natin ibubuli? Ba't natin papayain? Gawin nyo sa amin yun because we are public servants, we are elected. Okay lang yun, fair game po. Bawal ang onion skin. Bawal po ang uh, balat sibuyas. So ako, even on my page, wala akong sinesensor. Gusto nyo ako murahin doon? Gusto nyo sabihin ko anuman? 
tatanggapin ko, binabasa ko. Kayo, community ko, kailangan makinig ako sa inyo. But to, to others, even if they're celebrities, even if they are known in their fields, uh, even if they are social media sensations, di ba? Why, why bring the debate to, to, to that level? Kung may magkamali sa English, may magkamali sa example nila, meron medyo mapusok ang kanilang uh, uh, emosyon kaya kung ano ang nasabi. Di ba? Who of us in our life never experienced that, never made uh, mistakes, addiction, sa example, etc.? No? Because of all this divisiveness and after consulting with the members of the House, the political parties and regional groups, I thank you for that, for the consultation and for your belief in the leadership. I, together with the House of Representative leadership, have decided to forego with the provisional franchise and immediately proceed with the hearings for the full 25-year renewal application of the ABS-CBN franchise. Let me repeat that. Doon po sa hindi nakakuha. The House leadership have decided to forego with the provisional franchise. But we will immediately proceed with the hearings for the 25-year franchise. However, there are the non-negotiable ground rules for this to happen. I hoped in my first speech to convince everyone that was fair. But nakonvince din ako nung iba na baka hindi fair. So inisip ko sa sarili ko, what is a matter of principle to me and what is a, is a matter of pride? I really believe hindi ito timing na pag-usapan yung ABS. Pero baka pride ko lang yon. As Alan Caetano, as Congressman Alan Caetano, as Speaker Alan Caetano. Kung tingin ng mas manakakarami, it's the time to talk about it, then I will not let the pride get in my way. But what part is principle? The part that is principle is fairness. Eh kahit tapusin natin yung hearing ngayon, kung walang fairness, baliwala yon. So these are the ground rules that I propose and hope that you will also support. First, we must not forget our bigger concern. Huwag po natin kalimutan kung ano po ang dapat natin focus, which is to defeat the new coronavirus, to defeat COVID-19, and to provide hope to our countrymen. We must continue to focus on urgent measures that will ensure the saving of lives and livelihoods of our kababayan. And later, our most able chairman of the Defeat COVID uh, Committee, COVID-19, and our majority leader will outline some of these most urgent measures that will be there to help our people. Second, as I have said time and time again, the hearings must be fair, impartial, comprehensive and thorough. All voices must be heard and all issues for and against will be discussed. As we have seen yesterday, this will require a lot of time. Time that we do not have. And so there will be sacrifice on our part if we hope to finish this without delay. So we will multitask, in other words. But pakiusap po sa mga membro lalo po sa may expertise sa agriculture, may expertise sa medical science, may expertise sa engineering, may expertise sa finance. Di ba po? Hatiin natin ang trabaho. Doon po sa for and against at kailangan sa hearings ng ABS-CBN, wala pong pipigil sa iyo. And get all the expert witnesses that you can. But those of you no, who we need at the forefront Talking about the economic stimulus, talking about kalusugan, no? talking about their regions, and if you have testing centers already, or West, as you were telling me kanina, no? that the big corporations, while they need help, they can practically take care of themselves. Pero paano po yung micro, small, and medium enterprises, especially the micro, di ba? Tama yun eh. We, we cannot abandon them. We have to continue to focus in helping them. And third, that we all vote in accordance with our conscience and not our politics. In other words po, makinig tayo sa hearings. May alam tayo, let's testify. E kung tatanungin niyo po, sino ba ang pinaka-apektado sa ABS-CBN? Yun po ang irony eh. Doon po sa nagkri-criticize sa akin. Doon po nagsasabing ang Solgen ang tama. Bakit? 
Sino ba pinaka nakapektuhan ng ABS-CBN noong 26 election? Hindi ba ako at saka si Presidente Duterte? Hindi ba kaming dalawa ang tinarget? Hindi ba ako nagdemanda sa kanila? Hindi ba ako ang nag-file ng uh, TRO at hindi ang Solgen? Yet, I had to find it in my heart as Speaker of the House to be fair to them and to give them a hearing. Siguro po kung hindi ako Speaker, kung ako po ay isang membro ng House, katulad niyo o Chairman ng isang committee, kasama po ako sa magpa-file ng resolution na imbestigahan ng ABS. Pero hindi po eh. You allowing me and supporting me as Speaker of the House gives me extra burden on my shoulders, which is that at the end of the day, pag binalikan ng Kongreso and we are judged, we have to be judged to have been giving justice to everyone. Bakit po mataas ang ratings ng Kongreso? Bakit po sa sunod-sunod na, na survey, pataas ng pataas po ang Kongreso? His, historic po. One is because we've been working hard and we've been delivering. But I think the other reason, the more important reason, pinipilit po natin gawin kung anong tama. Despite po no, the weight of politics, of, of you know, yung day-to-day things that we have to deal with sa politics, this 18 Congress have tried to do what is right. That's why mataas ang ano. So ngayon ba magbabago tayo because maraming tumutulig siya? Mga ngamba ba ako na bababa yung ratings? Hindi. Sa inyo na yung ratings, basta't kami, pipilitin namin gawin kung ano ang tama. For those of you who are calling for an outright approval or denial, I ask that you suspend your extreme views until the facts have been presented and all these testimonies have been heard. What do you have to lose? The hearings might prove your point at lalo ka maging pro o lalo ka maging anti. If I may borrow the analogy of a member of Congress who often disagrees with me, but I still respect kababayan ng aking agom, Congressman Edsel Nagman, who gave an analogy about a locomotive and a speeding bullet train. Manoy Edsel, the gentleman from Albay, this is not a speeding bullet train nor a misdirected locomotives. Trains and locomotives follow fixed tracks. May release po yan eh. And have predetermined destination. May terminal po yan. Hindi katulad ng jeep na pwedeng pumara kahit saan o pwede mo sabihin, boss, special, kumaliwa ka dito sa... EDSA, punta tayo dito. Hindi po. Ang tren po may riles. Ang tren po may stasyon. Precisely the problem in dealing with the franchise of the renewal of ABS-CBN is what? Is that that we do not have trucks? Wala pong riles dito. And we do not have terminals. Wala pong blueprint na magpapakita sa atin na mag-agree tayong lahat na ito ang paraan para sa ABS-CBN. Denial or approval. What we have are our individual compasses to help us find the true north. Sabi sa akin kanina ni Congressman Gatchelian, sa kanya the true west. No, but the true north, my friend, west. No? And this is what this leadership is all about. This is what 18 Congress is all about. For those who cannot understand our position, thank you. For those who can understand our position, Thank you then. But for those of you who understand our position, join us in trying to understand the position of others so that one day, baka they will at least attempt to understand our position. So to my colleagues and my countrymen, sa ating mga kababayan, we can disagree on the fate and the future of ABS-CBN. But I ask all of us to form a consensus right now on how we'll face this new life. Yes, it's a new life. Hindi na po tayo babalik sa kahapon. And build a new economy. Yes, it will be a new economy. Yung highway na gusto natin i-build, nandiyan pa rin. Pero yung invisible highway, yung IT highway, yung digital highway, we will now have to build it. Maraming walang internet. Maraming hindi po makapanood pag walang TV kasi wala pong signal. Marami pong studyante na sa bahay dapat nag-aaral pero mahina ang kanilang internet. 
So the new normal involves a new life and a new economy. Let's rise up to this challenge. And let us give Chairman Chicoy Alvarez and our Committee on Legislative Franchise complete autonomy. Wala po mag influence sa kanila. Let us give them the task to carry out a fair, comprehensive, thorough hearing. Let it be continuous. Para walang magsabing pinapatigil, tinitigil, we're dragging our feet. Let us direct our committee to immediately and continuously hold hearing, hearings until everyone is heard. And after everyone is heard, then we can decide. Again, my dear colleagues, let's multitask. Like you've never multitasked before. Let us put our focus on the Filipino today and what our tomorrow will look like and how we can make a better tomorrow for all. I thank the whole leadership of the House, Minority Leader, Bishop Benia Bante, Majority Leader, Martin Romaldes, our Deputy Speakers, our Presiding Officer, Deputy Speaker Abu, Deputy Speaker Pulong Duterte, and all the Deputy Speakers, El Rey, who's co-author of the bill we were discussing. I thank you, you know, for the confidence not only in the leadership, but in the principles that we put together. So let us join President Duterte in his commitment to work and fight for a safe and comfortable life for all. And in that point, I'd like to thank the opposition, the members of the different blocks who are in opposition to this administration. Yes, you too are helping this chamber to make and give people a safe and comfortable life. So let me end by sharing with you a story about a wisdom ng aking ama na Senator Rene Compañero Caetano when I was learning to drive and when he finally allowed me to have a car and drive when I was already a student in the University of the Philippines. One day, a friend of ours drove less than 10 minutes from Alabang to UP in 10 minutes. A few weeks later or a month later, he tried it again. Nag-turn turtle yung kotse. He was okay, but he almost lost his life. You know, inches lang or ano. So my dad talked to me. Gano'n ka bel kabilis magpatakbo? 70, 80. Siguro that was 90 or 100, pero siyempre teenager ka. Diba? So sabi niya, what would you do when you get to the intersection of EDSA, whether it's Pasay Road or Buendia, red yung light, alauna ng umaga. Whether you're coming from UP, going home to Alabang, or you're coming from Alabang, going to UP. No? Or you're going to Taguig, to Bagumbayan. Sabi ko, I, I drive the same. Sabi niya, hindi mo babagalan? Sabi ko, hindi, baka bilis ang upa eh. Nakita ko, go. di ba? Ako ang tama. Bibilisan ko. Sabi niya, mali ka doon. Sabi ko, bakit? E green yun. Sabi niya, e paano kung may truck na hindi sumunod sa red? At kaakala niya walang kotse. Tumuloy yung truck. Binangga ka. Patay ka. Anong tawag sa'yo ngayon? Hindi ako makasagot. So sabi niya sa akin, son, that's what you call your right, but you're dead right. Pwede po tayong lumaban, pero patay tayo eh. Diba? Pwede natin pagpilitan kung anong tama, pero patay tayo. So whoever is correct here sa, sa ABS shutdown or ABS 25 years, people's lives are at stake. I want to be right, but I don't want, to be pe I don't want people to be dead because we're debating who is right or not. So what will we do? We will look ahead, we will multitask. And while looking ahead, we will do the ABS-CBN hearings, but we will also take care of the urgent measures. We will look at our left, and we will see that there is a health crisis and try to address that health crisis. And uh, Dr. Congresswoman uh, Janet Garin and Helen Tan and their whole team diba, are focused on that. But we will also look at the right and see that our livelihoods are in danger. And that is where Junikua 
Wes Gecelian, Stella, Kimbo, Sharon Garin, Joey um, Salceda, Deputy Speaker Elway, Eric Yap, and so many others of you who are part of that cluster. And that's where the minority and the Makabayan Black will come in. When we look at the left and the right, ano ba ang new economy? Ano ba ang new normal sa health? No? But in the end, can we also look up? And when we look up, remember that there is a God who is perfect. And there is His creation which is imperfect, yet made in His image. And when we debate with anyone else, so yung mga nagmumura sa akin, you are also made in God's image. Di ba? And I try to see that in you. But it becomes difficult to see that in you when you're unreasonable. But never mind. Let's look ahead. Let's look to the left, right. Let's look up. And my dear colleagues, let us get things done. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Majority Leader.